Hi guys, uh, so welcome to the second video of our Java multi-threading playlist. So in this video, we will cover the concept of race condition and how we can solve that condition using atomic classes and synchronized keyword. And what is the difference between volatile, atomic and synchronized keyword and what are their use cases. Say I have this code example. So in this code example, what I am doing is I have two threads and inside each thread, I am incrementing the count of one integer. 50,000 times okay and same thing is happening in the other thread and both the threads are accessing the shared object and inside the shared object we have increment method which is doing count plus plus so if i run this code so you will see like thread one started thread two completed but our final count is not what we were expecting because final count should be 50k plus 50k 100k right uh, but the count is uh, 63 455 so this is known as race condition when two threads are trying to do any operation on the shared object so this can happen inconsistency of data can happen in this condition so let's see why it happened first so if i go to this uh, diagram right so i will just copy this so let's say in our code two threads are running so let's say on cpu one thread one is running and cpu two thread two is running okay so it will look like this and in our main memory we have one integer variable that both the class will try to increment right so what happened is when you think increment right so in increment in the back end three operations are running so what will happen here so when you say i plus plus so first step is the value of i will be fetched or read right and then add one to the value and assign new value to i right so i plus plus do these three things in the backend so it's like not a one operation right in the backend it's like three operations are happening just to increment the value of uh, any variable or you can say even in case of decrement same thing will happen instead of add one it will be minus one to the value so when this thing is happening right so in the code, we started first thread, which will run 50,000 times and thread two will also run 50,000 times. So let's say when it ran first time, right? So let's say it's running first time. So CPU one or thread one fetched the value as zero from the main thread, right? And then so I will remove this. So let's say first the value is being fetched here and then it is stored in cache. And then in the registers, your I++ line will start implementing this one, right? So this method logic will happen in the registers. And in this logic, these three operations will happen, right? Uh, the value of I will be fetched, add one to the value, assign new value to I. So what will happen now? Like during the time this thing is happening, right? Let's say thread two also started and it fetched the value as zero right so it fetched the value as zero and it goes to his and it goes to the caching then registers and then this registers is also doing the same thing i plus plus right when this thread is doing i plus plus then let's say this thread already performed the operation and put the value back as one in the main memory right and after some time then this thread to also did the same thing and put the value as one in this main memory right so in this case if you see the ideal value should have been zero plus one plus one is equal to two but due to race condition right the value became one in the main memory so that's why when we are running the loop let's say 50,000 times for both the threads that's why the count is becoming less it will always be less right if we will not handle it so now to solve this race condition right we can use atomic classes so let's say if i will convert this int to atomic integer and then i will say new atomic integer zero and then instead of count plus plus i will use increment and get method of this class which will make sure when these steps are getting performed right when this step is getting performed then no other thread is fetching the value so that it makes sure 
every time the new thread will get the real value not the old value right and instead of returning count i will say return count dot get zero so i will just just say count dot get and if i run this code now right so we should be able to get the exact count if you see 100k here this thing can be solved by atomic classes or it can also be solved by synchronized keyword so let's say if i go to the same example and i will revert back this code so i will change it to int and then let's say instead of this increment i will just use the synchronized keyword on incre increment method right so if i run this code now right with the simple int but on increment method we are using the synchronized keyword so synchronized is basically a lock based approach and atomic keyword or atomic classes are non lock based so if you see here the count is as expected with synchronized also but only difference is atomic classes will be faster than synchronized in this case because again it is because it is like doing mutual exclusion mutex or you can say lock based approach right but atomic classes are not doing any lock instead they are leveraging the hardware support to perform that operations okay that's why it's it will be more efficient as compared to using synchronized block synchronized can be used in four ways so this is the method of the instance class right so we are using it like this and also you can use on the static method in a same way and also inside this method like let's say if you want only to specify synchronized on particular code of lines right no need of synchronize no need of logs right and then instead of putting at method level you can also use it like this synchronized this and you will be good to go right so this way synchronized can be helpful just to make sure you only synchronize that line of code in which uh, you in which the developers can see the issues can come like a uh, race condition or visibility problem that we discussed in the last video so you must check that video in which we discussed a uh, visibility problem and how we solved it by a volatile keyword and also you can use same in the static method also if i will say static here so in in, in static instead of this you have to give the class name dot class okay so it will work uh, fine here so and it should be static so like this you can use either in the static method or you can make it whole static method as synchronized or you can use within the static method or the instance method so that's how you can use a synchronized keyword and atomic for atomic classes you have like atomic integer boolean long right and you have other array classes also and inside each class you can use different methods like count dot increment and get right and then you have a uh, compare and exchange so this is like uh, if you want to exchange based on some value so it can really help you so these all methods are helpful but most of them you can use increment and get or a decrement and get and a dot get to get the value most of the people are confused like when to use these keywords so let's see the high level use cases uh, so i have prepared one uh, tabular format let's uh, discuss what's the difference between synchronized volatile and atomic so for mutual exclusion synchronized is a lock based approach that's why it ensures mutex or mutual exclusion but volatile and atomic are non lock based so for visibility synchronized will be able to achieve that volatile will also achieve the visibility of changes but doesn't provide a mutex atomic will ensures visibility plus atomic operations like we saw i plus plus or i minus minus so atomic classes will atomic classes will handle that thing for performance synchronized can lead to performance overhead due to locking and context switching uh, volatile have better so volatile and atomic will have better performance as compared to synchronized but volatile only one drawback is it may not always guarantee atomicity atomic will give definitely better performance than synchronized because it leverage hardware support for atomic operations like cas or read modify write 
तो सी एस इज कम्पेयर एंड स्वेप और रीड मॉडिफाई राइट सो दैट्स वाई इट्स रियली फास्ट एंड इट्स रियली एफिशियंट एंड यूज केसेज राइट सो सो डिवेलपर हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक बेस्ड ऑन देयर application code what it is doing and use these keywords accordingly right so if i am a developer and i feel like i need mutex on some line of code or method right then i will go with synchronized and if i feel like my code is uh like if i have a code that we saw in the last example where one thread is updating the value and other thread is just reading the value right in that case you can go with the volatile keyword and if we are dealing with some increment or decrement atomic operations then you can always go with the atomic classes because it's inbuilt and it's non lock based so you don't have to worry about performance also so these are the some of the use cases and difference between these things so all so at the end developers should able to know this concept so that they can use them accordingly so it's not like these are competing with each other it's like we have to use all three of them in our code wherever needed right or wherever appropriate to use so let's uh, quickly see the happens before concept so basically what happen is like if in your code right you have some set of instructions then cpu or compiler will automatically reorder that instructions to give you the better performance because they will run that instructions in parallel so let's say if we have any instructions like this let's say a is equal to b plus c and then we have d which will be equal to a plus z and then we have like m is equal to n plus o right just a random things right so it can be anything like maybe full name is first name plus last name so any logical thing it can be in your code but here the issue is let's say developer have written the code in this sequence but when you run this code the compiler or cpu might reorder the things to run this line plus this line in parallel because they don't have any dependency right so it can be the case reordering code can execute in this way and then in the last it can run d is equal to a plus z because this have dependency on a which is coming from here right so the reordering can happen right so it's fine for the single thread right but this can cause issue when multiple threading when multiple threads are accessing the same variables right shared variables so that's why to avoid that or to give the set of instructions to the compiler we use these keywords right so that reordering will not happen in a way which will impact your logic in the multi threaded environment so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content